we got so many church buildings, so many so-called Christian organizations here in Murfreesboro, you'd think there'd be people on every street corner preaching the doctrines of Jesus Christ. But they're not. They're just religious people. It's because they don't preach the law of God. They don't care about the law of God. They care about donations and, and money and their, their tax-exempt status that they get from their God, the Internal Revenue Service. That's what they really care about. But the law of God is perfect converting the soul. It's everything you need. You want, you want somebody's soul to be converted? That's all that's required is the law of God. You don't need some smooth-talking guy in a suit in a pulpit for a soul to be converted. You don't need soft-sounding music for somebody's soul to be converted. The word of the Lord says, again, the law of the Lord is perfect concerning converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. See, if you embraced God's commandments, the Word of God says you'd have your, light, your eyes enlightened. The problem is most people, they don't want the commandments of God. That's why they live in the dark. People live in the dark, and they're going to end up in the flames. They're going to be burned alive for all of eternity because they never embraced God's commandments. They never became of a humble heart and a contrite spirit. They never put their faith in Jesus Christ. That's why America needs, I mean, if America is going to be great again, supposedly, you need the, we need the law of God because we need souls converted. And the law of God is perfect. It's complete. There's nothing else needed for any soul to be converted. The reason most souls won't be converted is just because they hate God. They don't want to be converted. They don't want to be part of the kingdom of God. They don't want to worship and obey the one that actually created them. That's what's wrong with America. That's why we have so many sinners today. People don't want his commandments. They don't want to obey him. And, well, they're going to get what they earned. The word of the Lord says that the wages of sin is death. That's what you're going to get paid on Judgment Day, right after your last heartbeat. The wages of sin is death. That's what most people are going to get because they don't want God. They don't want his ways. They don't want his commandments. And some of them will uh, even convince themselves, well, I'm a good person. I'm pretty sure I'm going to get into heaven. There's people worse than me. Now, your judgment is relative, but it's relative to Jesus Christ. It's relative to one, not, not, not relative to your neighbor, not relative to your pastor, not relative to your, pist your, your Hitler or somebody. Your judgment is relative to God himself, who never sinned. And the word of the Lord says that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. That's you. You need to be born again. Otherwise, judgment day is going to go horribly, horribly bad for you, and it's going to go on for all of eternity. Today may be your last chance. Again, the law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. Yes, it, the law of the Lord could make some of the simple people in our society wise. We have some very foolish people in our society, wouldn't you agree? We got some serious fools in our society. That's because they don't have the law of the Lord. Again, the law of the Lord is making wise the simple, praise God. The statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. If we want truth and righteousness in America today, we need the judgments of the Lord. They're not hard to find. It's black ink on white paper. Your holy, blessed King James Bible, that's all you need. Tragically, most people don't want it. They're really not interested. And again, the, God's judgments are more to be desired than gold, yea, than much fine gold. The judgments of the Lord are more to be desired than fine gold. How many people in America are buying gold today, but they haven't embraced the judgments, the statutes, the laws, the precepts of God? People have their 
may, may have a house full of gold, but if you don't have the judgments of God, you're a fool. You have nothing of value. All you really have is shiny rocks. That's where gold comes from, right? They dig rocks out of the ground, they clean it up a little bit, and then you have some gold. What's that going to do you on Judgment Day? It may do you a little bit of good here on earth, I, I guess, perhaps. I, I'm not sure how you can buy a loaf of bread or a gallon of gas with some gold, but I guess it'll do you some good. But what you need to do is have the long view on things. You need to be looking past this life here on earth. Because you don't know when it's going to end, but you know it will. You know your life here on earth is going to end. And oftentimes it's surprisingly and abruptly. No doubt these days a lot of people, they die suddenly, don't, don't they, today? Especially the people that have allowed strangers to inject them with unknown substances. Those people die suddenly quite a bit because they're foolish and they, they don't fear God. They fear men. They fear people like Tony Fauci instead of fearing God, and they do foolish things. And who knows what's going to happen to them? Who knows how long they'll live, how much their life will be shortened? Again, more to be desired are they, meaning God's judgments, than gold, yea, even much fine gold, sweeter than honey and the honeycomb. Moreover, by them is thy servant warned, and in keeping them there is great reward. Again, talking about God's judgments. You need, to, you need to have God's judgments hidden in your heart. Jesus told us, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Now, I've heard some foolish people say, oh, you can't judge a person's heart. Well, not according to the creator of heart, of man's heart. Not according to Jesus Christ. You certainly can know what's in somebody's heart because of what comes out of their mouth. And if you have the laws of God, the precepts of God, when somebody gets under pressure, when they're under stress, and God's, God's judgments, his laws, his words, his psalms, his proverbs comes out of a man's house, mouth, you can tell that's what his heart is full of. But most people in today, most people in America today, what comes out of their mouth when uh, they get upset or when they get hurt or when they get scared? Four-letter filthy cuss words. How about that? Have you ever seen that? They got an F-bomb pops out of their mouth when something bad happens. That way you know that that's what their heart is full of, thus saith the Lord. Again, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. If you got dirty, vile, filthy cuss words coming out of somebody's mouth, if somebody's mouth is a toilet, that's because their heart is a sewer. You need a new heart. That person needs their heart cleaned up and sanctified and purified by the, by the cleansing blood of Jesus Christ. That's your only hope. That's the only thing that would be good for you. Otherwise, by and large, you're just wasting time. You're just living a crappy life waiting for judgment. You're just living a, a life trying to clean up behind yourself when, in fact, the filth is never, never gone. You just move the filth around in your life. The only way to get the to get the crap and the filth cleaned out of, your, out of your life and gone forever is to have God himself clean it. It's to have God himself wash it away in the blood of Jesus Christ. That's the only true cleansing that'll ever happen. You can't set aside the judgment of God by doing some good works, by trying to clean things up a bit. It doesn't even work here in a courtroom here on earth. I mean, if, if you go to, to to a courtroom here on earth and you're accused of murder you can't say well judge there's lots of people i didn't kill look look judge there's a whole court of courtroom of people i didn't kill this it doesn't make you unculpable you're still culpable for the murder you did commit you can't make up for it you can't make up for stealing somebody's money by giving a bunch of money to some other people that's not going to help you in the courtroom of man, and it's not going to help you in the courtroom of God. And then God's angels are going to drag you to the pit of hell. God's angels are going to drag you and throw you into the everlasting lake of fire and brimstone. Because that is what you've earned. The wages of sin is death, thus saith the Lord. What you need is the gift of God, which is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. That's the good news today. 
What you need is the gift of God. What you need is eternal life, and it's a free gift. You can't earn it. You can't make it happen. You can't, like, be a religious person and do a bunch of stuff and, like, get salvation by earning it. It's a free gift. But that's only given to the ones who are of a humble heart and a contrite spirit toward God because they're wicked, hell-bound sinners and have faith in Jesus Christ, God himself, who made himself an atoning sacrifice on the cross of Calvary. It's only through faith and repentance you'll get the gift of God, which is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. The people that try and earn their way to heaven, people that try and earn their way to paradise, will get none of that. The people that try and earn their way to paradise are denying Jesus Christ. They're saying, no God, no Jesus Christ. I don't need you dying on the cross for me. I'll do it myself which is a thumb in the eye to Jesus Christ, and he'll be having none of it. He's being quite merciful that he hasn't thrown you off into the everlasting lake of fire and brimstone for your sin already. We certainly have a lot of bad philosophies in America today, don't we? That, that's one of our ma major problems. One of the major reasons why we don't have such a great nation today is bad philosophies. Some people will even sit their children down in front of, like, the wicked world of Disney, the wicked wishcraft world of Disney, and they'll tell them things like, follow your heart. Have you ever heard that horrible philosophy, follow your heart? See, the word of the Lord says that the heart of man is deceitful and desperately wicked. So when somebody sit, tells a child, oh, you should follow your heart, Susie. Johnny, you should just do whatever your heart says you should do. You have just told that child to follow something that is deceitful and desperately wicked. That's a bad idea, wouldn't you agree? Don't follow your heart, people. The heart of man, as it says in, in the book of Jeremiah, the heart of man is deceitful and desperately wicked. Who can know it? I'm speaking about the Word of God, right. the doctrines of Jesus Christ. Hey, watch out, watch out. Keep your hands to yourself. Keep your hands to yourself. Yeah, keep your hands, yeah, discern that you need to keep your hands to yourself. You wanted to say discernment. Okay. The fool hath said, the, the fool hath no delight in understanding. You ever try and get, give some understanding to a fool? Like you tell somebody, you know the cigarettes are going to kill you, right? And the fool says, they're not real delighted with that. They said, yeah, I know. They probably even read the side of that cigarette pack or that, that container of tobacco where it says it's going to kill you. They have no delight in learning that. The, a fool hath no delight in understanding. You know what a fool delights in? The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. That's what a fool is after. Because he can't see past his, his own selfish pleasure. That's why we have so many people in America today that do bad things to small children. Because they only go after their own pr pleasure. They have no charity. They have no righteousness. They have no fear of God. And if you wonder why America has gone so wrong, it's because of no fear of God. If we actually feared God and kept his commandments, we wouldn't have all these problems, would we? We wouldn't have people getting drunk in America if people feared God and kept his commandments. We wouldn't have religious organizations ripping people off, taking their money. Those religious organizations that have their contract with the Internal Revenue Service so they don't have to pay taxes after you've ta paid taxes. People wouldn't mess with any of that stuff if they feared God and kept his commandments. But the fool, talking about the, the fool still, a fool hath no delight in understanding, but then his heart may discover itself. A fool tries to discover his own heart. I bet you've heard that foolish philosophy, haven't you? Oh, I've gone to discover myself. That's a fool you just heard. Anybody that you've ever heard say, oh, I've gone to discover myself. I need to discover myself. Those are the utterance, utterances of a fool. What you need to do is discover Jesus Christ, so to speak. Of course, it's not, you don't really have to discover him. His, his words are written, his laws are written on your heart. His words, that everything he wants to know, you to know about him are 
black ink on white paper in your Holy Blessed King James Bible, or just download an app on your iPhone or your Android device, you could have his words. That, that's what you need to quote unquote dis discover. That's what you need to be looking for. God's doctrines, his precepts, his laws. That's what's perfect in converting the soul. The word of the Lord does not say a church building is perfect in converting the soul. The word of the Lord does not say a religious organization is perfect in converting the soul. It's the law of Lord is perfect. The law of the Lord is perfect in converting the soul. That's what people need to hear. Not some happy-go-lucky, fun-time, feel-good message that Jesus loves you and God has a wonderful plan for your life. That's not what people need. People need to understand they broke God's laws and they're going to burn forever for it. That's what the Lord says. That's what the Lord Jesus Christ says. Now, some people, they have other lords, I guess. Their father, the devil. People have that, of course. The devil says, hey, Johnny, if you join this relig religious organization, you're going to go to heaven. They're going to say, hey, Susie, if you hand out all this Watchtower Society literature, you might get to paradise because you're not one of the 144,000. Those are the utterances. That's not the word of God. Even if you rewrite the Bible and make your corrupt Bible version, you need, to, you need to abandon that philosophy. You need to flee that religious cult. You need to take all that Watchtower Society garbage and put it right there in the trash, right there. There's a trash can right there. You can dump it all in there, repent toward God, and put your faith in Jesus Christ. That would do you good. That would, get, that would get you born again. You could be part of the body of Christ. But most people, they don't want the doctrines of salvation. They just want to embrace their, their slave masters. We have a lot of people that embrace their slave masters today because it's comfortable and it makes them feel good. It makes them feel self-righteous. The self-righteous people are not going to inherit the kingdom of God. It's the people that know they're wicked and go to God in grief and sorrow and have faith in Jesus Christ. Those are the pe people that become part of the body of Christ and are welcomed into heaven on judgment day. But the religious people that refuse to discard all their lies, they're going to embrace their lies, hand out their lies, die in their lies, be judged for their lies, and burn forever in the everlasting lake of fire and brimstone. For what? For lies? You're gonna, people are going to drag their lives, their lies with them to the judgment seat of God. The great white throne judgment, they're going to drag their lies with you, and Jesus Christ is going to call them out, and they're going to be cast out. They're going to say, Lord, Lord, didn't I pass out plenty of your lies on the street corner? And he's going to say, depart from me, you worker of iniquity. I never knew you. See, the God of Jehovah's Witnesses are not going to be there in judgment day. Just like the God of the Roman Catholics is not going to be there on Judgment Day. The God of the Hindus is not, where, where they got 30 million gods, that the, the bevy of gods for the Hindus is not going to be there on Judgment Day. The God of the Muslims is not going to be there on Judgment Day. The, the gods, what's that? Why? Because? Okay. No, no, thank you. You don't need to dress for me. You need to be dressing for what the Christian God of the Bible, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob expects. He's the one that you need to be concerned about when you get dressed in the morning and when you eat in the morning and when you close your eyes at night. Don't worry about me. You don't need to be worried, worried about the one that uh, has no power over you on Judgment Day. Again, like I said before, people are worried about the, the temporary things here on earth. And they're not concerned about the eternal things that are going to go on forever. See, the lust, lust of the flesh is destroying people in America today. You got people, they get, they get drunk on Friday night. And what do they do on Saturday night? They go get drunk again. You got people, they, they'll, they'll get high one day. And what do they do the next day or later the same day? They get drunk again. You got people that keep ingesting their tobacco, whether they set it in, on fire or stick it in their lip. Are there tobacco that they snort up their nose, I've heard about? And they're never going to be satisfied. None of that satisfies. Because your flesh on earth here will never be satisfied. Some people think that 
doing sexual deviant things will be satisfying when, when it doesn't. It just makes them weird and perverted. It just makes them violent and hateful toward even those closest in their life and even just strangers out in public. They're hateful towards them. Even hateful towards their own flesh. They destroy their flesh because they keep trying to satisfy their flesh. And that's why they die early. They do things that make them feel good for maybe a few minutes or maybe a couple of hours, again, through their drug abuse and their drunkenness. But it destroys their flesh. Their flesh is not satisfied, and they're actually destroying it. Even good things like sex and food, when, when taken in the proper context, is good for your body. When you do too much and you do it in the wrong way, you shorten your life. You destroy your body. You ruin society. Society is not made better by another obese person that's putting more weight on the medical industrial complex. You're supposed to use your God. You're supposed to use your body that God gave you to love and serve your neighbor and to love and serve God. That's what your life here is for. To be charitable towards your, na your neighbor and to fear God and keep his commandments. But the reason we got problems in America the reason why America isn't great is because we have people, instead of fearing God and keeping his commandments, they just chase after the lust of the flesh, the lust of their eyes, and the pride of their life. Some people, they think they're living a good life, and they think everybody should look at them and admire them and model their lives after themselves. That's wicked. You need to be pointing to Jesus Christ, that you need to live your life as he dictated, as he has laid out for you.